didn't take long. It took, well, about a year and a half to destroy the American economy and drive this nation into a recession. Now, the Biden administration won't admit that we're in a recession. In fact, they've tried to redefine the word recession. But you don't need to know what the word is to know what is happening. If you live here, you see it every single day. We're in a recession. The economy has been shrinking all year. Real wages are at record lows. And at the same time, inflation is the highest it's been in the lifetime of most Americans. So call it whatever you want, but it's a recession and it's scary and they're ignoring it. How exactly this happened? How did they tank the economy so fast and what does it mean? But consider what his handlers wrote for him. The experts Biden was referring to are in fact some of the most well-credentialed figures in all of academic economics. In fact, two months later in September of last year, 17 winners of the Nobel Prize in economics signed a letter urging Joe Biden to spend as much money as possible. And we're quoting, the Build Back Better package, they wrote, will transform the U.S. economy to be more efficient without presenting an inflationary threat. So go ahead and spend more money, create it out of thin air, print it, and there's no chance you'll get inflation. Winners of the Nobel Prize in economics said that. If you took Econ 101, you're laughing at that. This is the Fed. These are the people in charge of our monetary policy who are supposed to be keeping America from collapsing. But they're ignoring their actual job in favor of pretending that they're professors at Brandeis. It's lunatic. And they're still talking this way. In April, well after it was very clear inflation was not transitory, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, former head of the Fed, someone who should be charged for what she did to the U.S. economy, gave a speech not about the U.S. economy, she's the Treasury Secretary, no, but about climate change. And why climate change, climate, is more important than saving the United States. And we're quoting, we must redouble our efforts to decarbonize our economies, Yellen said at an address at the Atlantic Council. Keep in mind, Janet Yellen doesn't know anything about climate. She can't drive a standard transmission. She knows nothing about the material world. But there she is spouting off on climate change and decarbonizing. The things she say, says doesn't make sense. She can't even predict inflation when every single other person in the country knew it was coming based on the federal government spending patterns. Keep spending money. That's what she's still saying. Everyone in the Biden administration is saying that. In May, the head of USAID, Samantha Power, she's back, declared that worldwide fertilizer shortages were actually a good thing. Starvation's a good thing because that means fewer carbon emissions. Never let a crisis go to waste, she said. She actually said that. Inside the White House, no one's even pretending to care as the U.S. economy falls apart. They're not worried about the oil supply. In fact, they're selling our oil to our main global rival, China. They're not worried about the stock market. They couldn't tell you if it's up or down. They cannot even define a recession. We're not going to acknowledge it's even happening. And so they're not. And no one's forcing them to. That's what they're saying. This is untenable. Unless you're an utterly partisan economist, you have to acknowledge what's happening. But the most highly credentialed are not acknowledging it. And of course, on the basic point of whether the economy is in trouble, there are very few people left to deny it. Well, first of all, I think the recession has already started. I think we're in it now. It's just early. In fact, the first quarter was already a negative print. And I don't think it's going to be a mild recession. I think this recession is going to be worse than the Great Recession that started following the 2008 financial crisis. So, you know, and remember, the government didn't see that one coming either. And in fact, when we were six or seven months into that recession, the Federal Reserve and other economists still claimed that there was no recession anywhere in sight. So this recession is going to be much worse than that one. And what's going to make it particularly problematic is inflation, because inflation is actually going to be exacerbated by the recession. So Americans are going to have the worst of both worlds, a worse recession than the Great Recession of 08, but worse inflation than anything we experienced during the 1970s. Well, that's what they said last time, right before the financial crisis. They said the banks were in great shape. Look, the banks are only in good shape until the value of their collateral collapses and people can't repay their loans. That's what happened in the last financial crisis. This one is going to be even bigger because the economy has a lot more debt now than it had in 2008. And Americans are less able to pay it 
when interest rates rise because the balances are much greater. So we're in much worse shape as a result of all the bailouts and all the stimulus that papered over the last crisis. And so now the one we're dealing with is going to be much worse because we kicked the can down the road instead of solving the problems when we had a chance. Well, there's a remedy, but it's not without pain. And unfortunately, it's the middle class and the poor that are going to feel the pain the most. Because if the Fed fights inflation, it's middle class and poor people who are going to suffer the most during the inflation fight. If they don't fight inflation because they think they want to spare the middle class the pain of a horrible recession, well, then they're going to suffer even more uh, with massive inflation. Well, they can drop a lot farther and they will drop a lot farther until the Fed does an about face and acknowledges how weak the economy is. See, the Fed is only pretending it's going to fight inflation because it's also pretending that the economy is strong enough to withstand the fight. It's not. Even though the fight is inadequate to solve the inflation problem, it's going to cause a big problem for the economy that is so levered up on debt. And in fact, you talked about the target earnings Earnings are collapsing because Target customers are spending all their money on food. And Target doesn't make big profits selling food. It makes profits selling other goods that Americans are now too poor to afford. And so the bad news is now Target has to really raise prices even more, especially for food. Prices are going to go much higher for basic necessities. But eventually, the government's going to have price controls. And that means a lot of these necessities won't even be available. You think we have shortages now, wait till you see how bad they get when government imposes price control. So my advice is to shop now, buy what you can while it's still on the shelves and before prices go even higher. Well, it would look horrible. I mean, we did it in the 1970s. Uh, why wouldn't they do it again? The government has a history of repeating its mistakes. It never learns from them.